Hey everybody, this is the Workplace Therapist Show, uh, home edition. Uh, and so for today's show, I guess if you call it a show, Abby, would you call this a show? I call this a show. You call it's this always a show. A show. It's, <laughs> if Abby's on the show, it's always a show. So this is my lovely, amazing daughter, uh, Abigail Smith. Hello. Uh, that's your, Abigail Grace Smith, that's your full name? Yeah. Oh, only when you're in trouble. Only when Abigail I'm in trouble. Grace Smith. Yes. So we're going to talk today about uh, home life. We're going to talk specifically about kind of how this season has been disruptive for kids in school and particularly Abby being a senior in yeah. public school like this has been a different kind of senior year so I just thought we would have a little bit of a conversation about what that's been like and so Abby can give her experiences and uh, her perspectives on it and I can ask her questions so uh, maybe a good starting place um, Abby so this was this was your senior year this was yes <laughs> so how have you adjusted to having the senior year because so in Georgia where we are mm -hmm. officially yesterday they said Okay, all schools are not going to be in session. Mm -hmm. They're going to be virtual for the rest of the year. Yeah. So how's how is that? Have you taken that? Um, I think aspects of it are definitely hard. Personally, for me, I don't think it's been the worst. Um, we're really fortunate and blessed to like live where we live. It's not awful, you know, being stuck at home. I like my family, so it hasn't been horrible. But. Um, it, there, it, this is you. This is recorded. That you said you like. I know. Out. I know. You all heard it right here. <laughs> she said it. I'm trying to be positive. I recognize a lot of people are in worse shoes than I am, but mm -hmm. I think there are some. It, the the part that's hard for me is that my classmates who I've been with for the past 13 years, like as of yesterday, are no longer my classmates. Mm -hmm. Like I will never sit in the same classroom with them again. Yeah. And that's hard, and I really love my cross-country and track team, so it's also hard knowing that I'm not teammates with them anymore and my coach isn't my coach. So that's that's difficult. So you said something really interesting a couple days ago. You said um, you you wear a Garmin for running, okay? Hey. Um, and so you said every day your stress has gone down. Yeah, that is true. For me, I, I guess I didn't realize. And, and, and that's for you. Like It yeah. could be for different people. They could be totally. really stressed out being home. But for you, this has yeah. been easier it's or better. 100%. And I'm really thankful for that. I didn't realize how stressed I was or the, how I how what a negative impact going to school every day had on my stress until I wasn't doing it anymore. And I kept noticing like, well, I'm in a better mood. Like I feel better. And then my Garmin was proving it too. I saw this like downward trend on my stress level and I was like, okay, it, it's really interesting. Yeah. So a lot of people, you know, talk about, you know, when we think about like our, my generation, we say, oh gosh, you're so, so sad that you're going to miss graduation or you're going to miss prom. Or, mm -hmm. But for you, those are not necessarily, for you in particular, yeah. those are not necessarily events that you feel like you've got to do. For me. And that's the thing. I don't want to, this is my experience, not necessarily my classmates. I recognize that a lot of them are super, super sad to have that taken away from them. For me, I'm also someone who tends to be like 10 pages ahead of like everything. So I kind of already checked out. Honestly, I wasn't really looking forward to prom or graduation. <laughs> like graduation was going to be really long and hot and outside. Um, so those weren't things that I was like super excited for, and th those aren't the things I'm missing in this time. I also got a sense like a lot of those things created social pressure for you. One hundred percent. I think that things that used to be maybe in your generation like super exciting and things to look forward to as like fun times to let loose. I I think that there is a sense of pressure that mm. comes with them, especially social media. You know, like prom isn't just about going to the dance and having fun. It's like mostly about the pictures you take before mm. and like having looking great in those pictures, like having a great like friend group in the photos with you and like knowing that other people are going to see this later. I think it's also interesting, like senior year. When you go to college and when you start looking for roommates or friends or rushing a sorority, something like that, people really tend to look at those photos of like, how good was their senior year? Like, did it seem like they had it all together? Did it seem like they had, they were having a lot this of fun? This is like way too much pressure that everything you know, put out has got to look good. It does. And I think that some people might not interpret it that way or some people might feel it even more. Um, but I think that especially like with graduation, like for example, something that was personally stressing me out that is super dumb, 
was having enough cords. Like, so stupid. But that's just something that, like, comes along with graduation. Like, I mean, something having enough cords on the... Yeah, like, uh, when, when you, you post... Yeah, when you graduate, it. like, when you post the pictures, like, looking like you did enough. I didn't have any cords. So I know. I, just, I know, and back examples. in the day, no one would know that you had no cords. But now the cords thing. But now so, people okay. see that, and they're like, oh, Interesting. they did nothing. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to wear cords around the house? Would that make you feel better? I mean, maybe. Maybe, maybe it would. Organize yeah. some cords for you. So, all right, now you're doing the rest of the semester at home. Mm -hmm. Well, how much work are you, do you actually have? Yeah, significantly less. I think that a lot of my teachers were a little bit confused and in the dark as well. You know, this is stressful for everyone or definitely different for everyone, I should say. So a lot of my teachers weren't sure if we would be going to school for a, like the last month or what would be going on. So we were kind of just given like tentative work, a few worksheets a week. Um, told to watch videos. We would have like in, like Zoom lectures. Okay, so a typical day when yeah. before you might have had eight hours of work, right? At school, a bit homework. I would say so. Yeah, probably. What are you averaging now? Three, maybe. I think that's my experience of how much you're working. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to make sure my experience was lined up with actually what's happening. Your brother's a little bit less, I think. Yeah. One sleeps all the time. The other one, I he's, he's not an hour, maybe two hours of work. Yeah. Which and he, it, and it's he, funny talking to even you know my friends who were teaching universities and colleges. Yeah. It's the same. The workload has kind of dropped. So yeah, interesting. I'm sure all the parents and families watching this video are uh, saying, yeah, that's kind of what's going on at yeah. my house too. I would say also like I could probably be putting in more work like if I really wanted to. Okay, again, <laughs> you heard it here. She likes her family. She could work harder. <laughs> nice, excellent. Just keep digging that hole. Okay, I'm sorry. Senioritis kicked in early for me. This is not helping with it necessarily. Um, okay, so I want to. I don't want to uh, make this a super long uh, segment. Yeah. So um, two final things I want to talk about. Yeah. So I want to talk about now. You had to make a college decision through all this. So mm -hmm. Abby and I were going to go to visit a, a college in New Orleans, and mm -hmm. then why, the week we were visiting, planning to visit, I mean, within days of the visit. Yeah. The, the whole thing got canceled. It's like Harvard closed all, all their um, schools. And then within about 48 hours, every single college and university just followed suit. Yeah. Just did exactly what Harvard did. And so you weren't able to visit colleges as you were making that decision yeah. after the acceptance letters came in. So how, yeah. did you, how did you make that choice when you couldn't actually see the school? Yeah. I think that that was a really difficult choice to make. I, I think that sometimes people think of like senior year and the whole college process is like something super fun and super exciting. For me personally, I did not have that experience. I thought it was super difficult on everyone involved. Uh, I personally <laughs> did not enjoy that experience either. I would not look forward to repeating it, although we're going to be repeating it two more times. Yeah. I think it'll be easier with my brother, so I'm a little bit more high I, Well, it right. better be. I mean, it just better be. <laughs> um, but I did choose to go to UGA in the fall, so that's So this I'm is going. our announcement. Yeah, this is my announcement. Um, making that final decision was difficult. Part of it did come down to financial. I mean, just staying in state is so, it's so much cheaper, honestly. Um and while that's not all of it, I think that Georgia... So did, did the um, kind of pandemic and impact on the economy, did that factor into that decision for you or or maybe not that much? No, totally. Um, I think it factored into it a, in a lot of ways. So um, kind of recognizing too, long term, if something like this were to happen again, I was kind of thinking about it and I was like, I wouldn't want to be in debt, you know? And I think that going to... Of going to Georgia, I think I will have just as many opportunities as I would going to a different school mm. that costs more. I think that um, go. I, I originally had wanted to go to a smaller school and wanted that kind of more one-on-one -on -one environment, but I think that there are ways to make that. I just going into. I know I'm going to have to be more intentional about it, um, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for the yeah. better financial. And, um, and so now during this whole season, now your next step is try to find a roommate. Yeah, that's difficult. Yeah, that, that's. Yeah. <laughs> but I have a lot of time on my hands to do that. Yeah. Uh, I'll, 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 well, you sounds like you could be doing a lot more work. 
I'm, I'm working on other things here. Priorities, you know? So, oh, we just lost our... Okay. Okay, we're right, still we, lo we, we lost our camera for a minute. Yeah. Okay, so the last thing I want to ask you. Yeah. Um, so as you think about people watching this, families that are watching this, mm -hmm. uh, what any advice you have on how to use this time productively? Um, I would just say, I think... Clean your room? Yeah, not done that. Clean your room. Oh. I think that positivity goes a long way. I would also say like recognizing that other people are in the same position as you, but also could be in far worse position than you. I think that's important just Appreciate to remember. what you have. Yeah, I, I think so. I noticed you turn the camera so it's like a little more on you. This is really how you'd like to have it, right? Yes, yeah, I, star. I'm just kidding. Yes. Um, I think two things that have really helped me in this time. One, I've been running a lot, which I think it's been really good. You know, I mean, Partially because it's nice to get outside and be active. Also for my mental health, you know, I'm much happier and nicer person when I go for a run in the morning. And it gives me some structure. Um, and like creating some structure in your day, although I don't always stick with it. It's nice just to say like from these hours to these hours, I'm going to focus. And then from these hours to these hours, I'm going to go annoy dad, you know. It's important to have a plan. <laughs> so, so nine to five is annoying dad. Actually, no, it's really <laughs> <laughs> How are your hours? You don't. We're not doing that. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, so that's good. So structure, running, yeah, yeah appreciation. I think okay. so. I that's think that those are all okay. things that have helped. Well, us. I think this is a good first segment. I think I'm probably going to have you back. We might even have to bring in your brother since you get there. <sighs> views and perspectives. I don't, I don't know if this. I'm ready to share the spotlight. I Dad. think you need to. <laughs> it's time. So uh, we are wishing you and your family an absolutely uh, restful, hopefully, and renewing time during this because I know it's hard and stressful for everybody. And I can tell you, even talking to all my clients, the biggest challenge they've got is how do we figure out like this, the family thing yeah. with all this when I'm working and they're working and there's you know limited space and how do we kind of make it work? So uh, I don't necessarily have the answer, but I just want to get Abby's perspective on it and uh, share it with you. So Abby, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so... Um, so hopefully everything with you all and your family is going well. And uh, stay tuned for the next segment. Bye. This is when we wave. This yeah. is when we say goodbye.